Swords, or perhaps we should say words, since it can be seen that swords are words, a play on words. If you perceive swords in the Bible for cutting off heads, killing and fighting, then you should look a little deeper. Jesus was not building an army for physical fighting. He was gathering people, an army if you want to use that, with his words, with the word of God. If we say harmful words, then for sure we have impure thoughts too, since words stem from thoughts. Words can be weapons and create fear, or they can be beautiful and create love. Matthew 7 verse 16 says, By their words shall ye know them. This is why free speech is so important. We can see through to the heart of someone by the things they say, through their words. Words can be uplifting, kind and loving, or they can be weapons, damaging, wounding and hurting. The words people say demonstrate their heart and their intentions. Words that damage a person can be like torture. They wound emotionally, mentally and spiritually. There is a saying which says, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not true. Physical wounds heal far more quickly as they are only on one level. Words can penetrate to the soul as well as the heart. It's easy to say that words don't bother us, but they do. If, for example, there are 20 kind comments on social media and one unkind comment, our minds will focus on the one unkind comment. It's human nature and only natural. How do we resolve this? We send kind thoughts to the person who said or wrote the unkind comment. They are more in need of kindness and love than we are. Retaliation or tit for tat has been tried for centuries and has never worked. This is not a new concept, although it may be new to us right now in today's world. If we all did this, we would be amazed at the results. Once spoken, words can't be taken back. Think before you speak. Are you bringing someone down or are you uplifting them? Is your word a sword or is love your goal?